It had been a great flight with a great entry and landing, and the team was preparing to hand over the vehicle to the KSC ground folks. One of the last orders of business in this process is to transition from internal vehicle cooling to ground cooling. Now in orbit, cooling is accomplished through a combination of the radiators and flash evaporator system. As shuttle equipment heats up, the Freon loops and water loops carry this heat to the flash evaporator and radiators to be dispersed into space. For entry, the radiators are cold soaked and then bypassed so that that cooling can be used on the ground. Then post landing, the shuttle uses its cold soaked radiators for a few minutes and then as they heat up, the team activates the ammonia system, which flashes ammonia onto the Freon loops to provide cooling. In order to have a safe transition to ground cooling, the ammonia system has to be deactivated and confirmed to have no leaks. And then a go is given so that the ground team can activate ground cooling. At least that's the way it's supposed to go. Now there are some critical elements to consider regarding cooling. Obviously you have to keep cooling going so nothing overheats, but at the same time you can't get too cold or you could freeze the interchanger. The interchanger is the heat exchanger where the water loops dump the cabin heat onto the fan loops. All the shuttle cooling loops meet there. And since we're dealing with water, we can't let it get below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or the water loops could freeze. And as you know, when water freezes, it expands and crack. You've just ruptured a piece of equipment that could cost over a million dollars to replace. And this is a very efficient heat exchanger, so this would only take a matter of seconds. On STS-27, the Ecom team was faced with just this scenario. Roy, prompt, are you okay? Oh, good, Thank you. Good see. No problem, Slate. Ecom? And here we're still waiting to see the uh, brown cooling flow. Okay. Okay, DPS? Uh, uh, we're ready to go. Intel? We're ready. Thanks. We're ready to hand it over. Booster? It's post-landing, and everything's going normally. You're on the ground. You've made it, right? What could go wrong here? The team is even starting the post-landing tradition of hanging the plaque, in which one of the flight controllers is honored with special recognition. However, not everything is done. Handover to ground cooling hasn't been completed, and the ECOM team is watching ammonia performance as suddenly the free end loop temperatures start diving. So why don't you tell me first of all, so we got Queen Carlock and Chuck Dingle uh, for STS-27, why don't you tell me your positions for this flight? and uh, what the responsibilities of those positions were. So, start with the leader, Chuck, of the team. Okay, so it's been a while, but I think it was Ascent Entry in uh, Orbit One ECOM uh, for the flight, so we were responsible for the life support, thermal control, and also at that time, the electrical power systems on, on board. Okay, and Quinn? I was the Ascent Entry Thermal, and specifically responsible for the active cooling and passive cooling systems on the shuttle, including uh, the ammonia boiler, Freon, and uh, water loops, primary. Convoy Commander, this is Houston flight on a command net. Ecom thermal. Go oil. Yes, sir, we're estimating about a I, I was not watching what exactly happened, but we had 110 plus switch over on system D. Okay, so what were you looking at there that uh, cued you into the fact, hey, I got a problem going on here? Was that that bell that went off? The alarm that went off earlier probably? Uh, actually what happened was the first thing I saw was we have an indication on the ammonia system the primary controller if something goes wrong with the logic or goes under temp mm -hmm. it automatically switches to the secondary controller mm -hmm. trying to go to a different controller to control the system. Yes. That was the first insight as I saw is this indication that we just switched from the primary controller to the secondary controller and generally means under temp. That was the only indication at the time was seeing the switch. And having said that, that was upstream into the evap out T-deucers, so the temperatures hadn't arrived at. Yeah, how many seconds is that from ammonia to? Uh, that's, I, don't know, I forgot. You probably, yeah. <laughs> you probably. I do know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about 45 seconds or so. Okay. Yeah, so you guys knew something, something switched over, but you probably didn't have an idea at that point. It was an under temp, right? right. Okay. And I, th I think he may, may have just called, hey, I think he called it under temp switchover, maybe. Right. Okay, let's see what you're ready. 33.3, 32 You better get a call here when we're ready to initiate below. We'll be momentarily. We'll call you right back. 31.2, you're in the red. Are you ready to take the vehicle? You know what they are? They're already going to turn off the ammonia system. Now the team has confirmed there's an under temp problem. The cold slug has now shown up on the downstream temperature reducers, and the extra cold Freon is racing towards the interchanger, which could crack if faced with these temperatures. 
How long does the team have to respond? What is the correct course of action to take? Okay, so at this point you know that you've got the evap out tee low, and what are you thinking? What am I thinking at the time? There was a hairy edge where, you know, it's the, I knew that it may be initiated ground cool and there's some spec leakage to the ammonia boiler that it leaks ammonia. So you're getting some cooling from it, whether it's on or it, when it's on, no matter what, if it's not required or not. So it's providing extra cooling to the loop. Initial thought was, okay, we're down, just broke 32 degrees. Maybe they're cool, having their cooling carts adjusted real low. Am I re ready to take this drastic action yet? Or is this maybe we can take the ammonia boiler off and that would be sufficient to bring it above freezing again, was my initial thoughts. Uh, it was not, I was pretty getting pretty excited, you can hear, was the fact that, you know, we were actually below the, the freezing point of water and we needed to do something quick. And so that was the initial reaction, was get it off and see if that will bring the temperature back up above freezing. So what's, what is the issue here with getting too cold? What's the, what's the problem with doing that? It's your turn to talk, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the, the interchanger is a very uh, efficient heat exchanger, and it's got uh, Freon on one side and water on the other. And if you put in Freon below 32 degrees in pretty short order, you're going to end up freezing water. For, turn the water into ice, it expands, and volume changing the heat exchanger can break the heat exchanger. Gotcha. And that'd be pretty expensive to try to replace that. Yes. And one of the big things was that we have done that before in SDS-3, there were some data points. The big thing is, I don't think they have any spares. And I think the big thing is it just puts them, not only the cost, which they estimate over a million dollars, but getting a new one and installing it and the downtime of the vehicle was a big impact. So impact to schedule would have been pretty enormous, huh? Right, I mean, basically you can't power wow. up the vehicle once the you know, loops or water loops are not active. So knowing that, why didn't you just Go take the drastic. What is drastic about turning the Freon loops off? Why don't you just say, oh, let's go ahead and turn them off? What's what's the issue there? You know, so we got on one side, we don't want to freeze the interchanger. Why don't we want to just turn the Freon loops off? What's the issue there? Um, well, I mean, to me it was a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> and it hadn't hit that threshold. I kind of had my line of sand. It gets below 30 degrees. That's when my line of my sand were I'm not playing anymore. And as you're going to hear in a little bit, it happened fairly quickly from drop down and it was very obvious that once uh, it got to off scale low of the deucer, which was 24.9, you'll hear that several times repeated. Off scale but, low. You know, it was off scale low. <laughs> yeah. It was very obvious what we needed to do. Um, but uh, it was, a, to me, it was a drastic, I mean, the fact that we could potentially shut it down, we may not bring it back up, or we may do something wrong where uh, we lose some science because we lose put cooling to the vehicle. Uh, and I don't know. It's a DOD flight, I don't know if yeah. <laughs> but. All right, that's okay. So you, so basically, you turn off the frame loops, you're losing cooling to the vehicle. Right. Right. The potential of emergency power down. And, I, I, and as you hear later, I pointed out I didn't care. It's Chuck was being the brave person. Let's get it back up. I'm like, I was like, <laughs> just, shut just it down. For, just <laughs> forget it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's play a little bit more. Everybody come deactivate ammonia system. Everybody stand by just a minute. Uh, we're going to wait. Plenty come. Go ahead. Ammonia system beat off. We're under temping. Temp com ammonia system beat off. We're under decom thermal. Go. Deactivate both free on loops. ASAP. Plenty come. We'd like you to take the ammonia to off. Deactivate it. Plenty come. Go ahead. Both free on loops to off. Temp com both free on loops to off. Atlantis, we'd like both Freon loops to off. Okay, ammonia boiler B just went off. Okay, flight this is the FCC on command. You're at 24.9 and 24.9. So it sounds like nothing, you made the call for the Freon loops, nothing happened, right? Initially, and, I, and I'm, I'm still not clear, you know, we, they're actually, the patrol team was basically in the, like I said, the post-mission mode where they're doing the, uh, um, uh, post plaque hanging and stuff, and I think even GC got to the point where actually we temporarily they shut down calm between the vehicles. What I heard later for the for nurse, first initial call to the vehicle to turn off both freon loops, and I don't think they ever left the house. So they're probably thinking the, the rule, the the one point one. Hey, the crew's gone. Why should I keep calm up? I mean, we're already doing the plaque hanging. Right. Let's just let's just shut this thing down. 
so okay yeah, I don't know what I don't know what all the factors were in that um, listening to that recording which I don't think I've ever listened to uh, <laughs> probably wanted to block all that out but uh, just being kind of stepping back as an observer to myself if I had would have had the wherewithal I think it would have helped to be more exact in the call especially knowing that the flight crew was not in there uh, who, who probably could have responded very well to deactivate both Freon loops uh, with a support person in there instead a, a more precise call like on panel L1 Freon pump loop right. one to off and loop two to off I think that in hindsight would have helped uh, get that m done much faster if, if I was a uh, asp in the cockpit trying to interpret that call I, I yeah. would probably have trouble myself right so. you're an MS1 who hasn't simmed in a year you're, where are those switches <laughs> right. yeah that's good that's a very good point that's a good point Yeah, you want to go to interchanger? Or I, I wanted at least one off. Okay. So what was going on there? We made the call for the friend loops, and now Quinn's calling again. Let's get one off. Yeah, so I can tell you from my perspective, uh, I was trying to find the procedure for VAP out temp, uh, VAP out temp low, I think in the entry checklist. Right. right. Okay, so I was I thumbing through the book to, <laughs> to, to try and find that procedure to save myself. <laughs> and uh, so I, w after making the call to turn both free and loops off, I think I was under the assumption that that would happen quickly. Right. I'm going to find the procedure to look for subsequent steps uh, to guide us. And so Quinn called and I'm asking questions, I think, out of that procedure. And Quinn says, hey, I just please turn <laughs> at least <laughs> one off. <Yeah. laughs> so yeah. it hit me at that point. Oh, they didn't respond to the call. Right, and you and Quinn can't see each other here, right? One's in one room, one's in the other room. So, and sometimes there's over the airwave conversation that goes on, and so you didn't know why they weren't turning the frame loops right. off, right? And I t and tell you from the, as a mid perspective, one thing it really taught me was, okay, I've already made the call, I'm watching, uh, Chuck, is, Chuck is watching this data too. Don't need to bother, he sees what's happening. Uh, I'm kind of in the back room dancing, panicking, cussing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Say, get the loop off. But I am not, I learned after the fact that when he started talking about what he wanted to do next, it was it put a fear through, my, fear through me that he doesn't realize they're still not off yet. Right. And then I'm, I'm questioning why <laughs> didn't they go off? Why didn't they, they actually do it? Um, so, but the, the point and lesson for future guys is, you know, don't make assumption that your, your freight pickers um, look at the data. This is all Vox, so it's happening much quicker than it really is. But right. we had, I want to say, correct me if I'm wrong, 60 to 90 seconds somewhere before we would have damaged the interchanger. Yeah, it's another we, 45. Uh, about two interchangers, another okay. 45. And we're ticking yeah. along. It's 50, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And, and right. I should have been going, hey, Chuck, <laughs> he's come, we're so on off. I should have been more proactive. I made the uh, assumption that he's looking at the data, he's seeing it too, he's cognizant, and he put the fear of God to me when he realized he made a call like, what are we gonna do next? And I'm realizing he's not looking at the data, and I'm realizing I should have been giving him- Pushing it. Pushing well, it. I certainly should have been paying attention to get the primary action to ensure that it was done. Yeah. And so that was one of the things that I wish I had done better. Uh, back at the time was to be more cognizant of making sure that they took the action that we asked. It's taking too much. It was my job to watch the system, so <laughs> I should keep him kept him. It's a team effort both ways. Yeah, right. Absolutely. It's a team effort all the way all the way around. Good and bad. We work as a team. Fine Con, let's turn both free on loops off. Kept calm, both free on loops to off. Atlantis for the ask, we'd like both free on loops to off. Income, what's happening to you? We're under temp. <laughs> Sound like he's getting a little stressed out there. <laughs> yeah, I think the seriousness of it was probably starting to soak in. Yeah, you mm -hmm. probably, I'm just guessing, you just realized I made a call and I'm looking at the procedures and my call didn't go go up and now I'm realizing I need to push this thing a little harder. Guessing. Yeah. 
something like that. Yeah, still I think uh, the lesson to be learned there was give a more exact call yeah. and you're more likely to get a quick response. So for you to call, because like you said, there was no panel there, it's just the pumps and if it was an ASP, they might be looking. He's looking, yeah. What is that? MO10W or that something. Mean? Is this on the mid deck? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. That's that's good. No, Mr. Page, three on loop one and loop two are both off. We copy. We see both three on loops off now. All right, you go. Okay, what are you going to want to do now? Okay, the free loops are off. The cold slug is stopped, but it's still sitting there, a silent menace ready to wreak havoc. The team knows this. But how does the team keep the interchanger from cracking and still re-establish cooling? Now how much time do they have? So you got both frame loops off and you know that's a drastic action. How long could the frame loops be off? And, ha and ha how do you gauge that? Because it's a big deal to having the frame loops off. Did you st are you starting another timer? Because you were starting your, your interchanger freeze timer. It's like I know I got so much time before that cold slug hits. Now I turn the frame loops off. You got another timer going now? I didn't have a time. I didn't have a timer. I, I had the, the 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 general knowledge that things don't melt down instantly. Right. To to me, probably the fuel cells are of the uh, biggest concern, and I uh, know that you know for fuel cells, what we could go for loss of coolant pumps on fuel cells, we could go like uh, nine minutes or yeah. thereabouts. Right. So yeah, I think you have probably at least that order of magnitude before something you know catastrophic happens okay. so clearly I think you have um, not a lot of time but an order of magnitude more time to deal with them being off than to deal with the cold slug coming around right okay is that kind of what did you have a yeah. clock going in your mind at all um, well the good thing is we had the uh, EPS guys and the fuel cells that I knew was the short pole we had the EPS guy watching the fuel cells uh, right across there, and he would be the one to make the recommendation whether we have to terminate the uh, emerge, do a, basically a, a power down of the vehicle if we couldn't regain it. So, um. now let me ask you this: had, had you guys simmed this case basically prior to this? No. Go ahead. I, I, I don't remember. No. Us having done. Not really. And the other thing, even when they did start simulating this, doing it a um, sims of this later after this event um, for, for, for future teams. It, the, one of the things about the post landing was always, it's very stressful for me, is you can't recreate in, in, in training the, all the noises, yeah. the ground convoys, the confusion of the additional loops, the communication that's going, all the loops you're listening, you're listening to. Um, it was very noisy. It was always a very stressful time for me when I became an e-com doing acid entry was because we didn't train it and there were just, the, not only that, even, even afterwards was just the chaos. Everyone was getting done with their job in the control center where it was noisy in the control center. It was noisy on the loops and you had this unknown factor who we don't train with, which is the KSC guys uh, very often that we, we did start using direct comm with the guys trying to minimize. Uh, any kind of problems, we can directly talk to the guys at the convoy. But uh, uh, no, it was the training was we sat down and walked through this procedure. And there was also a lot of lessons learned, like I said, from SDS3 with things that they had done after we handed over. They did some additional ammonia boiler tests that they they undertook, and there was some lesson learned from it. And the fact that that happened there made it made me very cognizant. If it happened once, it could happen again. Yeah, I think uh, I just can't emphasize enough uh, the, the, the few minutes of time that we took preparing and walking through that was just uh, enormous help. I, I think uh, uh, it's as much better as, as I could have done in that situation, and I, and I certainly wish that I had. Uh, I think I could have done a lot worse had uh, we not done that preparation because turning off both freon loops is a... Uh, you want to do what? Right. Uh, <laughs> right. So you want to turn off all the cooling of the vehicle? <laughs> yeah, the fact that we had talked uh, through it, uh, it at least it resonated with me that, yeah, that's what we have to do. We talked through that. We talked about the, the urgency of time uh, and how that has to be done to preserve that heat exchanger. So that, I at least never questioned that aspect of it. Had, had we not talked through that case is as, as deep a respect as I uh, 
have for Quinn and knew that he was, I had the best uh, thermal guy in, in the back room. I don't think I would have just said, okay, whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have at least questioned it yeah. some, right. and that might have made the difference in the case. So, so that preparation we, we did was just worth it, invaluable. Now, was that SOP for you? Like, if you had an event coming up that you would talk to the back room and say, hey, this is the things that could go wrong, this is what we're going to do, was that just SOP, or you just kind of got lucky that time that you did that? Uh, you know, I, don't, I really don't know. It's probably SOP when you feel like you don't know as much as you should know about something. And, and uh, uh, again, coming from the electrical side of the house and trying to pick up the thermal and life support stuff, uh, you, you don't pick up all the knowledge you need in a matter of a couple of years, which is probably as long as I had been thinking about it. Right. So it's many years of, of preparation to really understand those systems. So to, to me, it was basically all that we could, all that I could do personally in, in limited time in order to be the most prepared right. uh, that I could. Yeah. So had I had five or 10 years experience in that, I might've been more complacent and not felt the need to do that. But I, I did it out of a personal uh, <laughs> need to cover myself. Right, so. right, gotcha, excellent. Let's keep going here. So we got that right now, the free and loops are off. Stand by. We're going to exercise the procedure on page 5-6, entry checklist. Okay, okay. you want to take free and loop one to A, wait one minute, then go two to A? That's correct. Okay. Now is that something, it sounds like we had, you talked about this previously. So had you already stepped kind of through the recovery of the, yes, of actually, the scenario we, as well? When we went to the orbit, uh, orbit time frame, we actually went through all the contingency aspects of recovery steps and kind of walking through it. It was, it was really, uh, uh, so we kind of do the plan that we're going to do. I, again, I, I was at the point, I, was, I would have been happy to just said it's to an emergency pod that we're done with it. <laughs> at that point. In the quarter, so let's get this vehicle back ready in a good config to hand over. So, so I don't remember, were those steps in the, in the entry checklist of about t low to, to reactivate like that? Yes, they, they did. They were. Okay, that's good. And so you're, it sounds like you're doing one loop at a time. Why don't you just turn them, you know, the under temps, we've stopped it, let's go ahead and turn them both on. Why did you do it that way instead of one loop at a time. Oh, it was actually part of the procedure, but the real reason is, is you're only you're, you're only activating one, so half the, I don't want to say, um, you're only dealing with half the cold slug at a time. And the vehicle's being hot right now, the water loops have gotten, the interchange has been hot since it's been running without any cooling, so we're trying to introduce one loop, look it over, only yeah. add, you know, add one of the cold slugs at a time, and then evaluate. Um, you know how the system is working so you get the insight into the situation whether or not your under temp situation is right uh, basically remedied right or not yeah. with with the, you could look at it as half the risk you know half the heat rejection right. capability of the heat exchanger and I, I wasn't paying attention did y'all pick were you picking the Fran loop that uh, was associated with the ammonia system I wasn't paying attention to that uh, actually both of the loops were off at the time so I mean with to turn it back oh you knew both ammonia systems were already off. off it didn't matter You're right okay that's right okay gotcha. so do we have an additional measurement on one loop over the other I... yeah you had an interchanger in on loop one okay yeah so I don't know if that's why we might have picked you might have picked that one first okay that's... I just did what he said <laughs> <laughs> well, well listen he had a little bit he chucked us good okay I, and I can't remember now, have you already gone flow proportion valve to payload at this point? I can't remember. Actually, the, the, believe it or not, the old procedure was go to interchanger. The assumption was the payload loop was going to be the slow, slower flowing loop. So the procedure was writ written generically, always go to interchanger. Oh. Uh, it's been changed since then. Oh, right, right, right. So if you had a payload, you would freeze that payload's water loop if it was there. Quicker than. Gotcha. Okay. I'd like to wait a couple more minutes before I can loop two. One, okay. So take three on loop one to A at this time? That is correct. Okay. You want to do the procedure on 5 day 6? That's a firm flight. We're going to take three on loop one to pump A right now. Okay, Capcom, we'd like to go to 5 day 6. Yes, water loop one. Yeah, that's firm. Is that you guys? Yeah, water loop like one is on. Uh, page 5 day 6.
Entry checklist. Did you just say Waterloo? Did, you know, you know, so. Did I catch that right? Y'all didn't turn a water loop off. They, no. must, they must have said it wrong. That he may have said on. Oh, uh, maybe it was on. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, well, one of the points, too, is and when you really listen to this loop, it's amazing to me, after listening to this thing, how I knew exactly what I wanted to do, but I was under the stress mm -hmm. and, I don't know, water panic, but under the stress. Yeah. <laughs> right. He never panicked. Uh, <laughs> it's no, amazing. It I, I, I was having trouble right. communicating exactly. I was having trouble between between loop one and loop two and what pump I was feeling to communicate. Chuck did an excellent job of, okay, I, I heard what you said. Is this really <laughs> what you wanted, what, what were you saying? And it was very easy to go back and say, yes, that's what I meant to say. But it was amazing how the simple things like loop one and loop two, even though I had the procedure over, I was saying the wrong thing just to the stress. And I think Chuck said you had, you got yourself out of the quick response situation by turning the free loose off. Now you had kind of an order of magnitude more so you could slow down a little bit, right? A little, yeah. Not, mm -hmm. um, yeah, not a lot. You got the fuel cells out there heating up, right. but uh, yeah, you're able to slow down a little. So does that go through your mind? Okay, I can take a little bit more time, make sure I'm understanding the call instead of just you know pedal to the metal. Is that in your mind as you're? I think it was in this? mine. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know like it's a ways back. It was. Yeah. It was. Uh, I was going through my mind. Cam, I can see on pump loop one to A. That's a firm flight. And Capcom, we want him to start with uh, free on pump loop one to alpha. You want him to press on through the procedure, is that right? Guys, were they supposed to Let's start out with free on loop one to A and look it over. Okay. Capcom, all we want is free on loop one. Come on, Lee Con. Lee Con. Yeah, is that what you want? That is exactly. A and watch it for a minute. Yes, yeah, sir. And then we'll make the call to turn back to loop one. Okay. Two. Both free on loops are down. That's complete. We got other steps to read up to it. The uh, entry checklist is not available. We will do that. Entry checklist is not available. looks good. just said that. Did he just say entry checklist is not available now? I think I just heard that. I never heard that before until you mentioned the FDF's not there. So, yeah, I never, I never, never put that together before. Lighty on loop one is running again. Okay. Okay, they're back up now on loop one. Dennis, they're back up on yeah, loop I one. I think uh, Ecom, uh, are you noticing any ground cooling now? Two still down. We'll let you know when we see the flow on it. I can't answer that right now. Convoy Commander Houston, flight on the convoy. Come APS. Go. Okay, uh, fuel cell three, couldn't return tamper. Is like that right in there? Hey, yes, sir. Would you confirm? Uh, have three kilowatts. We cannot go like this. Okay, we just got the uh, three on the one back, back on. Okay, okay. 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 expect to reverse. Now we're on the ACL. Okay. Drive ACL. Go ahead, Dad. Uh, Tom, let me know when you're happy with the configuration. We won't leave it until you are. Negative. Negative. Loop one, free on is up. Loop one, free on is up. At that point, you had one friend loop up, and I heard the EPS as Minter, right? Was that Larry Minter back there? saying the fuel cell return temp starting to skyrocket. Um, at that point, with one frame loop up, were y'all feeling pretty good about yourselves or did you need to keep going, uh, get both loops up to you know, get yourself in a really good config? Or what was your clock like or what were your thinking once you got the first good. loop? <laughs> <laughs> you, you we're not ever tipping anymore, we got one loop up. I was feeling pretty good at that okay. point. Me too. That's good, so you're starting to get over the hump here? Gotcha. I okay. went from me dancing to seeing Larry start dancing. <laughs> it's up. not a dance of joy either, right? <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Okay, what is the about out at this time? Okay, about out here is 42.5. You think we uh, under temp due to ground cooling? Is dead. Yeah, initiate so ground so toilet back without uh, deactivating the uh, Two is that ammonia good system good. and uh, evidently cranked it down rather rapidly. Gotcha. So I know you just said it there, but just to put it out there. So at that point, what was the problem? You know, how did this whole thing kind of evolve? Check it. Maybe you can remember better. I thought they did. They they did a new system. I mean, they did a new procedure at on the cooling uh, cart where they recirc fluid. I believe is that. This is that sounds sound familiar. They recirc recirculated the, the fluid in the cooling cart. It would allow this cold slug to build up. Okay. And. Uh, um, so when they initiated, they got this really cold slug to occur, and I think that was it. it was a, but there was a new procedure they implemented for 27, and I think they did a way, changed it back after 27 to kind of more of a standard procedure they had. Now, was it back then? Was it s standard 
to have the ammonia in the ground cooling, but at the same time, they both came up at the same time, right? You had ammonia and they hooked up. Is that, was that standard back then? Normally they would notify us ahead of time that they're ready to initiate. At that point, we would make the call to deactivate okay. the ammonia, yeah. and then they would initiate. In this case, they initiated, I don't know if it was in, because it's the new procedure research, had this cold slug when they initiated it up, but we were not notified that they were about to initiate it. And there was also, there was some pressure that they knew that we were getting near the end of our second ammonia tank. Right. And they had so feeling, some... They're feeling a schedule crunch, crunch there. To get... Schedule pressure. To get, get that initiated. So I think that they got in a hurry and they initiated without going to the normal procedure, they contact and say we're about to initiate. Wow, so there's another, another piece of an error change. You got some, some guys on the other end are feeling some schedule pressure. You got some procedures that weren't synced up, some calm that wasn't synced up, people starting to get distracted with the plot king. There was a lot of a lot of variables going on in there. Yeah, you I, captured that really well. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you. I, I didn't I didn't realize that, that all that was going on. And uh, even listening to the to the recording, I didn't realize you guys had you guys had obstacles out in front of you didn't know about. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's really good. In hindsight's always twenty twenty. I I wish that I would have done more coordination with the people on the, the KSC end to have a better handoff. Um, and I think we did uh, improve on that a lot after after that event. Right, right. We'll see what else we got here. Yeah, KSC is going to be I hope it comes on down. Because uh, Chris R3 is under 4 kilowatts. Yeah, we'll be okay. It shouldn't be above 110 on that return. So it sounds like the EPS is freaking out a little bit, but you know it's it's going to get better here, right? I was le uh, I, I I don't know if it was out of ignorance or not, but I was <laughs> less concerned about it than uh, than Larry was at the at the time. Yeah, and you knew you had you had one friendly up, so you knew you had some cool. You remember what the KW was about that time? I think he was saying four the, uh, about four probably per, on that per, per fuel cell for right. that fuel cell. Right. Okay. So you but so if they're even, it's probably about twelve or so, right? Yeah. So one friendly up should be able to handle. Handle 12 pretty well. Okay. Uh, whenever my work works back to my dog, it appears everything's back to nominal. We're we're go so far on going with two back on. Yeah, okay. Hey, uh, uh, were you, uh, did you not, uh, on your own? Uh, go with his, uh, cowboy okay, paint, so this is back ground back. cooling. This is ground cooling, so by activating this one system, it, it will not cause a change. We just cleared over here to the central entry. Mighty point. Go ahead. Okay, we seek the ground cooling on free on loop one now. We're go to uh, take free on loop two to pump A. Okay, this is okay. Right Capcom, we'd like uh, free on loop two to pump A. Linus uh, Houston, we'd like you to take free on pump loop two to Alpha. Roger, that's complete. Copy. Sounds like you're sounds like you you're done. Yeah. So as quickly as it came, it almost subsided and forget all about you, right? Yeah, like Quinn said that since that was Vox, I think the pain lasted a little bit. Yeah, right. <laughs> longer. <laughs> yeah. This is a, a the Vox. This is oh, what, what we got about nine and a half minutes there. So unvoxed. How long do you think the situation really went? About double that, maybe? Or do y'all do y'all recall? That's probably I guess. Guess. Yeah. I guess. Right. Well, that's excellent. Any other f summary thoughts about the situation? I know you gave a, a lot of hindsight while you were while we were going, but uh, any any other thoughts about the the situation? I guess uh, just some of the things that came from this mission, I and mean, like we talked about, the flight rule one dash one got changed. We started to train post landing. We, we spent a lot of time with the uh, KSC folks trying to establish better protocols and communication between the ECOM and the ground, and the ground convoy guys. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we improved the, the VAVAL-T low procedure. We became a lot of improvements on how to go through it. Um, what else did we uh, improve? You reminded me of stuff I had long since. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, but there was a lot of improvements on how, oh, and the communications with the flight director, stressing with them that, hey, look, the vehicle, there, here's what under temp occurs, this is why we're so scared of it. Yeah. And, they, and the flight director's doing a lot better job post-landing to make sure the team is cognizant, hey, not, we ain't handed over until 
keep the room quiet until the ground crew is established and the crew's out, so. Sometimes, even when the mission's seemingly over, it may not be over. In the midst of distraction, the ECOM team identified the undertemp situation, diagnosed the cause of two cooling systems running simultaneously, then resolved the situation while preserving crew safety and all vehicle hardware. The MCC flight controller is one who must always be aware that suddenly and unexpectedly, we may find ourselves in a role where our performance has ultimate consequences. Discipline, competence, confidence, responsibility, toughness, teamwork, and vigilance. These are our core values, values that have served us well, values that have allowed us to slip the surly bonds of earth and perform our dance above the skies.